Hello everybody, this is Chris Morosky and this is a brief video on drugs and breastfeeding. The majority of the content for this video was obtained from Neil Hotham and Elizabeth Hotham and their article titled Drugs and Breastfeeding. This was published in Australian Prescriber in 2015. I highly recommend checking it out. It's a short article, it's a great review, and it includes all the details of this video plus more. The learning goals and objectives of this video are to review the contraindications to breastfeeding according to the Centers for Disease Control, to describe the effect of drug pharmaceutical properties on the concentration of the drug in the breast milk, to understand what influences the risks of adverse effects of a particular drug on the baby, and share available resources for more information on drug safety in breastfeeding. At the end of the day, most medications are safe in breastfeeding. Most drugs themselves are actually safe for the baby. Most lactating women rarely take medications, in fact, and those that do usually only take them intermittently. Although almost every drug is transferred somewhat to the breast milk, the amount is usually small and not enough to affect the baby. So at the end of the day, the big question is what are the actual contraindications to breastfeeding? According to the Centers for Disease Control, there are a few rare contraindications to breastfeeding. To begin, there are certain mothers who should not breastfeed or feed their express milk to their infants. In the setting where the infant is diagnosed with galactosemia, this is true. If the mother is affected with a human immunodeficiency virus, they should not breastfeed or provide the baby with express milk. This really does depend on the country in countries like America, where there's safe access and ready access to safe formulas, moms with HIV are recommended not to breastfeed. In other countries where formula is not readily available, those mothers are still recommended to breastfeed their babies. Moms who are infected with human T-cell lymphotrophic virus type 1 and 2, if the mother is using illicit street drugs, such as PCP or cocaine, they should not breastfeed. The exception here are mothers who have an opiate use disorder, and who are on maintenance opioids with negative HIV screening. And mothers with suspected or confirmed Ebola virus should not breastfeed. The next class are mothers who should temporarily not breastfeed or feed express milk. This include mothers that are infected with untreated brucellosis, mothers taking certain medications, and we're going to go over those in this video specifically, um, mothers that are undergoing diagnostic imaging with certain radiopharmaceuticals. We'll talk about that later, but those are radioactive medications that are injected into mothers. And mothers who have active herpes simplex virus infection with lesions present on the breast. Finally, there are mothers who should temporarily not breastfeed, but it's okay for them to provide the baby with expressed breast milk. If the mother has untreated active tuberculosis, and if the mother has active varicella infection that developed within five days prior to delivery up to the two days following delivery. These are mostly respiratory precautions and it's okay for the expressed breast milk to be given to the baby, although they should temporarily not be breastfeeding until these infections have cleared. Okay, returning back to drugs, the big question is what affects the concentration of drugs in the breast milk? There are several factors and we'll go over them individually. The first is the maternal plasma concentration. Drugs enter the milk from the maternal serum through passive diffusion. The time course of milk drug concentration is concordant with the maternal plasma drug concentration. The plasma concentration is also affected by the drug's distribution into different tissues. A high volume of distribution will contribute a lower maternal plasma concentration and therefore subsequent lower concentration in the breast milk. Maternal plasma protein binding. Drug binding to plasma proteins influences the extent of transfer into the breast milk. Free, unbound drugs diffuse readily. Highly protein-bound drugs are unable to diffuse in significant amounts. Size of the drug molecule. Most drug molecules are small enough to enter the milk. For example, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine. Small enough, go right in. Some have higher molecular weights and will not enter the milk. Examples of these are heparin and insulin. Degree of ionization. Drugs cross membranes in an unionized form. Milk is generally more acidic with a pH around 7.2 compared to the mother's plasma, which has a pH of 7.4. Therefore, the milk attracts weak organic bases. Conversely, weak organic acids tend to be held in the maternal plasma. Lipid solubility. In addition to passive diffusion into the aqueous phase, 
lipid-soluble drugs have co-secretion by dissolution in the fat droplets of milk. The fat content of milk also varies according to the age of the infant and the phase of the feed. For example, foremilk versus hind milk, with hind milk having more fat content. Finally, maternal pharmacogenomics. There's a growing knowledge about the influence of pharmacogenomics. A classic example of this is codeine. Codeine is variably metabolized to morphine by cytochrome P450 enzyme CYP2DS. Ultra-rapid metabolizers can produce significant amounts of morphine with repeated doses of codeine. Rapid transfer of the morphine in the maternal serum to the breast milk can result in neonatal CNS depression and potentially fetal death. It is recommended to avoid codeine while breastfeeding. Now balancing this out, the question also is, what influences the effects on the baby? There are again several components to this. We'll take them one by one. The first is the timing of the dose. Feeding the baby prior to taking a drug results in the baby receiving the lowest possible dose of the drug. This does not apply, however, to drugs with longer half-life, so caution is still needed here. Toxicity. Premature babies have a lower capacity to metabolize and excrete drugs. Also, if a baby has just been exposed to a drug in utero, further exposure in the breast milk will augment the existing concentration. This is used as an advantage with infants experiencing opiate withdrawal. The mothers of infants undergoing opioid withdrawal are recommended to breastfeed as long as they have no other contraindications. The baby then obtains some of the opiate in the breast milk, and this helps with the withdrawal. The following is a list of drugs that are actually contraindicated in breastfeeding. Examples of drugs contraindicated in breastfeeding include amiodarone, which has a long half-life and may affect thyroid function, antineoplastics, which can cause leukopenia and bone marrow suppression, Gold salts can cause rash, nephritis, and hematological abnormalities. Iodine in high doses can lead to infant hypothyroidism. Lithium is really not recommended in breastfeeding and is really only feasible with rigorous monitoring. As mentioned earlier, radiopharmaceuticals can be a problem as the radiation can be put into the breast milk and then into the baby. Retinoids are also associated with serious adverse effects. Back to things that influence the effects on the baby. Another one is oral bioavailability. Just because a drug is present in the breast milk does not mean that it will lead to significant exposure to the infant. For example, the infant gut may very well destroy or degrade the drug. And some drugs are not particularly absorbed well through the infant gut. Volume of breast milk. The amount of breast milk a baby receives also varies. For example, a baby exclusively breastfeeding at two months is going to be getting a lot more breast milk than an 11-month-old baby who is mostly nursing at night for comfort and bonding. Relative infant dose. The relevant infant dose is equal to the dose received in the breast milk to the baby relative to the mother's dose. The formula for this is relative infant dose equals the infant dose, which is milligrams per kilogram weight of the baby per day, divided by the maternal dose, which is milligrams per kilogram of the mom per day. This is expressed as a percent and it keeps in mind the different weights of the mom and the baby. A relative dose of 10% or above is a notable level of concern, although it's pretty rare. Also, the age of the infant. Most adverse effects of drugs in breast milk occur in newborns under two months, and rarely occur in those older than six months. An infant's metabolism and excretion capacity at birth is only one-third of what it is at seven to eight months. The following is uh, not complete, but good list of resources that are readily available on the internet. The first is LACMED or ToxNet from the National Institutes of Health and the U.S. National Library of Medicine. Another great resource is Mother to Baby, which is put out by the nonprofit organization of Teratology Information Specialists. All right, that about wraps it up. I believe if we go back to our learning goals and objectives, they were all met. Review the contraindications to breastfeeding according to the Center for Disease Control. Describe the effect of drug pharmaceutical properties on the concentration of the drug in the breast milk. Understand what influences the risk of adverse effects of a particular drug on the baby. And share available resources for more information on drug safety and breastfeeding. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you found it informative and educational. Good luck with your studies and we'll see you in class.